the shop. Today we're going to look at the crankshaft we're going to put into this 5.9 magnet. You can see I've got two different crankshafts here to choose from. Really the first thing you want to look at is when you pull it apart, look at the bearings, see if there's anything grossly wrong. If it has a spun bearing, either a rod or a main, it's likely going to need some machining. These did not. We'll take a look at the bearings here in a second. Well, the next thing you want to do is just to see if there's a crack in it, you can use just a hammer and tap it. So it makes this ringing sound. You can hear it continue to ring. If it sounds dull or flat, like the ring doesn't continue, then it likely has a crack in it. Both of these sound pretty good to me. This one, I believe, came out of the engine that had less ridge in it, so therefore I think it has less miles. So we're going to take a look at it. This will be the uh, candidate to start with. If you've got your motor assembled rather than disassembled, you have the advantage of being able to look at the bearings as you take it apart to see how things look. So here's a main bearing here. What you want to do is you want to look at the bearing surface and look for scores, gouges, anything that looks really strange. Um, run your finger across it, feel for any indentations. This bearing looks actually in really, really good shape. This is another main here. You can see, let's see if we can get video. It's a little dull here, and it's more shiny over here, so it it's, was riding more on this part of the bearing than over here. But it's still, it doesn't look bad. I don't see anything that looks concerning or strange about it. This is one of the mains as well. It actually wears a little bit on these faces for thrust. You can see it's had some ride. A little bit of interesting look here. Let's see if we can... looks almost like it had some sort of a varnish or something. I wonder if it got a little bit hot. It may have gotten hot, but the bearing doesn't look like it got damaged. Run my finger across it. It's a little bit rough. I also don't know which one of the two motors this came out of. I believe it came out of the one that had higher miles on it, so that does not surprise me. And then the next thing to look at are the rod bearings. Now this this bearing is out of the one that had higher miles. You can see. So they've got layers in these bearings. The very outside is a Babbitt layer, so a soft lead material. And then below that is copper. And you can see here we've got Babbitt, so it's still gray. Then it gets down into the copper. So this one was worn pretty well down. And if you look at this one, it was worn even further. It's a little bit rough. And it also has some dark color. So I think this one also got hot. I believe these are this and this other main that I had looked at. I think those are out of that second motor. So not the uh, one that this crank came out of, but the other one. Which is another reason I like this one better. Yeah, so this this is one of the rod bearings out of this one. You can see, take a look at that. It's got some striations, but I can't feel them. And it's still mostly gray. It's got some dirt on it still, but it's mostly gray. There isn't a lot of copper showing. So this one doesn't have a lot of miles versus this one that had a lot more miles and I think it actually got really warm. So the crank from this one would be more suspect than this one. We're gonna do some measuring of the crank next, but these are just some indicators that you're gonna see when you're pulling it apart. You can go, oh, this doesn't look too bad. This one has one scratch in it. So what has probably happened is it ingested something and the bearing is much softer than the journal material. So whatever it was probably ran around and got ejected or uh, encased 
at the end. Again, so you can see, there's a pretty good variety. I can guess which one this one came out of. Mostly copper, looks like it got hot. Again, mostly copper. So that's what you want to be looking at. Yeah, and this one, we've got some copper, but still mostly Babbitt showing. The ones, this is a main here, that looks really good, good and clean. So if you've got mostly Babbitt showing, pretty good chance that you're going to be able to reuse the crank without having to have any machining done. And any time you can avoid machining is good because it's saving you cost. All right, so the next thing you want to check is you want to check the main journals and the rod journals all the way down the crank. Uh, we want to check front to rear, rear to front, it doesn't matter. You want to measure each journal at least three times in three places. So, if we start, if we're looking at this rod journal here, actually this main journal, sorry, I'm going to measure it here, and I see that that is 2.809, and then I'm going to go 90 degrees from that and measure it again. point eight oh eight and then move side to side you don't want to just look in one spot look side to side and then say so go 45 degrees off of what those were Let's see if I can get one here two point eight. 09, 2.810, somewhere around there, real close. So this one is about maybe two thousandths out of round. And then we will compare that to the specification for this bearing, or for this journal, and see if we can use a standard. So if I measure this one here, 2.8, 10. It's important that you clean the journals first, so you're not measuring varnish. So again, 2.809, So you want to measure all of the mains, and then the rods, you actually want to measure, since we have two rods that connect here, we want to measure for this rod and for this rod. So we're going to measure... Two point one two five, and then again turn ninety degrees from that. Two point one two four five, so again half a thousandth out. Measure it three here, three here. I've already measured all of the journals on this crank. The maximum out of round is three thousandths on one of the rods, which does not concern me at all. And they're all uh, within three or four thousandths of one another, so it's in really, really good shape. Another thing to look at, though, is look for grooves or scores in these guys. Any, any type of a groove or score, any kind of a damage, means that you're going to need to have it machined as well. If you find that it's too too worn, you need to take it into a machine shop, and what they'll do is they'll grind it, make this journal smaller. They'll make it, say, ten thousandths or twenty thousandths undersized. And then you have to get a bearing that is an undersized bearing that matches that journal. So that's it. You just need to measure it, measure every single one, multiple places, Check it against the specification for your crankshaft. As long as it's all within 
uh, I would say, three or four thousandths of what it's supposed to be. It's an excellent candidate for reassembly. We're going to, when we assemble this, we're going to measure the gap between the journals and the bearing anyway. So this is purely a step to let us know whether or not we've got a chance of it going together properly. If these numbers are correct, we shouldn't have a problem when we assemble it, but we're still going to check using plastic gauge on every single journal as we assemble. So we'll see that in a, a video coming up, but that's really all there is to it. Real simple, all you need is a good set of calipers. One last note on crankshafts, do not store them lying flat like this because they've got uneven weight and it can tend to make them droop, so it can give them a slight bend. You might not think it's important, but a couple of thousandths of a bend is going to make it not turn in the saddles the way it's supposed to. It can cause you to it can cause a bearing to bind, it can cause all kinds of problems. So you can lay them like this for a while while you're measuring, doing that kind of thing, but if it's not being supported on all of the main journals, it needs to be uh, upright. So always store them like that. Of course they have the risk of being knocked over like this, so I usually tie them to something to keep that from happening. But this is how they should be stored long term. That's it. Thanks for watching.